It was at the beginning of the year when I told you everything about the 103 APO. That it is rather cheap, that it looks stunning and that it is very well built. And if you haven't seen that video, I put a link to it right here. But what we still don't know yet is how good is it with its one-time flattener, but also with the 0.8 and 0.6 reducers. And finally, after seven months, the sky is clear-ish. And so I can make my first attempt to actually shoot with the scope and show you the result. All of that right after the trailer. Hey, this is Fiend to Space. I'm Sasha from Switzerland. So good to meet you and thanks for watching my channel. So tonight what I will do, I will look for a nice target, someplace with a lot of stars in the star cluster or something. And then I will shoot first a few pictures with the one point flattener, then I will change to the 0.8 and then I will change to the 0.6. And then let's see what happens. So it's now almost dark and the sky is really completely clear. So I have good chances today to do all the three tests. I have already been able to plate solve the polar align and to put the telescope in the right direction. I have now to wait until it's completely dark, then I will also not be able to record anymore. At the moment, the M1 flattener is installed and I will start doing photos with it. As a target, I chose M24, the Sagittarius star cloud. I think no better place if it wants lots and lots of stars. After that, I will continue with the 0.8 reducer. And last but not least, especially because this needs also some mechanical changing in the telescope, as you know, we have to remove the last part of the tube. Then I will actually try it with the 0.6 reducer. Let's see what the results will be. Hey, Sarah, wonderful to have you here on the channel. Um, first time it was only as a joke and now we're actually really talking together. So that's absolutely great. Thanks for giving me the opportunity. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. It's, uh, it's an honor. So um, actually the idea was that you did this test way, way earlier, actually before I even unboxed my scope and you had even the opportunity to have clear skies. And I would assume that you had also in the meantime some opportunities to shoot with it. So you probably gathered even some more experiences since you did the review. And what I also found intriguing is that you used a one-shot color camera and with a 533 sensor. And I have a mono camera with the 571 camera, so the APS-C size. So I have a, a bigger size, but obviously the chromatic abbreviation I could not um, test. And so I think our tests kind of nicely complement. Yes, most yeah. definitely. So I think the first question would be, from the moment you did your review to now, are there any new learnings that you have made um, about the 103 APO? Yeah, great question. Um, so kind of just to go back to, um, you know, since I have, since I did release that video, I took this scope to Vermont to see the uh, total solar mm -hmm. eclipse. Um, and, and to image it. And I actually, uh, one of the setups that I used was this uh, scope right here with the 1X flattener and and a full frame Canon EOS RAW uh, mirrorless camera. And um, I will send you some of the photos, but I think it did an excellent job. I've been really impressed just with how versatile that it is. Mm -hmm. And um, as far as like new insights, I think just the ease of use and uh, the clarity has been, I've just continuously been impressed by it. Um, so yeah, really, really enjoying this scope. Cool. Any other learnings about the handling or the, the quality of the optics with any of the reducers or that you have realized? I actually haven't been using the reducers too much, mm -hmm. uh, which I probably should, you know, to get faster optics. But, you know, in my, t in my uh, original testing uh, with the 0.6x reducer with the 533 camera, um, yeah, there was a little bit of chromatic aberration, which I was kind of expecting anyways, just because it is so fast. And that's a, that's a lot uh, to ask for this kind of scope anyways, where you're taking out that extender and you're putting in this, you know, really mm. beefy reducer. Uh, so I, I think it was an acceptable um, part of it. However, I would have liked to maybe stack the images a little bit more to see how much more chromatic aberration, but kind of like what I noted as well in the video, um, you can use something like Blur Exterminator or, you know, take mm. separate images for the stars 
But I think just with any fast refractor, you're going to, or really any fast telescope for imaging, you're going to get a little bit of chromatic aberration. So it hasn't been too bad. Okay. So let's go through with all of the three um, add-ons. So with the flattener, so I used um, the M24, the Sagittarius star cloud, which I found a very interesting object because I was looking for somewhere where there's a lot of stars. And I think I never captured more stars than in this star cloud. It's really amazing the, the amount you get. To see how round they are, it was a perfect object. So with the flattener, I was really amazed out on the edges. I don't have full frame, just APS-C, but for me, out to the edges, I didn't saw a single star which was not completely round. And the back focus was really the exact 55 uh, millimeters. So I just screw it on and it was perfect. There was no sign at all of any um, back focus issues. And I think what I have seen from your review, it was exactly the same story from you, right? Yeah, that is correct. And by the way, I absolutely love the image uh, that you sent over to you. I was really impressed. I mean, it's crazy to see just that, that many stars um, in a field of view, but then to see them all just pinpoint, I mean, right on. That's, that was awesome. Yeah. And yeah, the back focus for the 1X flattener um, with the telescope here, totally fine, 55 millimeters. Mm -hmm. And I think from my point of view, that alone justifies this scope. Because I honestly, as you, I will practically or mostly use it with the flattener and without the reducers because that's what I really wanted getting some more focal lengths getting the 700 millimeters for planetary nebulous clusters small galaxies so that's what I'm really looking forward to awesome yeah I mean it's a, it's a great focal length for, the, for those types of targets with the 0.8 reducer I had actually the same story to the edges, I didn't saw a, a star which was not completely round. And actually the picture that I sent to you was made with the 0.8 reducer. So it was not even the flattener. That's right. Yeah. So no problem at all. Um, it was also very easy to change it. So you can, I'm on the mount in the knife for the testing, obviously. I just screwed the one out, the other in. And it was a thing of five minutes also here back focus exactly the 55 millimeters so it's really just screwing one out screwing one in and continue shooting and i think that i really enjoyed yeah just the ease of use the predictability the knowing that you know hey if you're wanting to switch something out on the field or outside wherever you're at um, just being able to know that you need these set of adapters um, or spacers to get to that back focus is such a relief i you know, even as a more experienced um, astrophotographer, I still dread having to try to figure out back focus. Um, it's just one of those points of contention I think that one has with themselves. Uh, trying to figure that out is just, for any new optical system, it's, it's kind of a headache. So to be able to have that continuity is, is amazing. Mm -hmm. With that, we come to the 0.6 reducer. <laughs> and, <laughs> Here we are. Yeah, and I would like to put it in two groups. One is optical. One is the handling. When it comes to the optical, I think the first shots that I have, and I, I will show here the, um, the aviation inspector, and you see on the, um, on the edges very nicely either elongated stars or most likely back focus issues. So it wasn't really great. So then what I actually really liked, even it was not enough, but what, it, what I really liked was the back focus adjuster of um, ASCAR. And it was so nice not screwing everything off, screwing something in, trying again, but simply turning the lever from half a half a millimeter to a whole millimeter to two millimeters. And within a few minutes, I could make some shots and I could see, do I get closer or even do I get at the back focus point? So I liked this thing. The issue was that even with two millimeters going over, so 57 millimeters, it was still not perfect. So it might be more than two millimeters. And personally, that's also handling wise, that's not really nice that we do not have the same back foot or not the stated back focus here. And I think you also mentioned that in your video that you had a feeling that the back focus was off, right? Yeah, that is correct. Uh, that's what it appeared to be. So yeah, I just, uh, on top of having to kind of, you know, muscle through trying to get the extender off and then, uh, you know, having to figure out the back focus, um, you know, it's from a, what you're used to with Ascar being such a user-friendly type of experience and then having to kind of, you know, you know, remove the extender 
and then also with the just the back focus kind of uh, lack of continuity there that's um, kind of counter to what we're used to exactly. with the, um, nice user friendliness. What I did then, I without anything else, just used the blur exterminator. And with the blur exterminator, I did not even reduce the size of the stars much, just correcting it, and it was all round. That's just, you know, and one of my patrons actually told me that. He said, you know, okay, it's not perfect in its original state, but I use blur exterminator, it's round, and so I'm completely happy with it. And I think that's, I don't know what you think about that, because would you pay more for a scope which makes round stars when after the blur exterminator, you could not see the difference anymore? Yeah, I mean, ideally it would be nice to get the most out of your optics possible um, and getting a system that has that grade of correction. Unfortunately, um, it's price-wise, it's not always uh, accessible for a lot of folks. And, and not, not to say that PixInsight plus Blur Exterminator are also um, price accessible either. Yeah. However, um, the nice part about having, if you already do have PixInsight and then you you know just start off with a free trial um, with Blur Exterminator or both, um, just being able to use those tools and kind of see what's possible, it takes a little bit of a headache out of trying to figure out back focus. Um, I'm not saying one is better than the other, uh, but it's, Whatever makes it most accessible for you. Ideally, again, yes, it would be nice to have optics that are fully corrected, but price-wise, it's going to be a lot more expensive, I think, than yeah. uh, getting pics in sight. So whatever you're able to, to get to, to get to an image that you like is, in my opinion, the way to go. I agree. So from an optic point of view, I would say it's definitely not perfect. I don't know. You, I might, if I would have tried even more, I would have gotten even a little bit perfect, more perfect, but I think I wouldn't have got them completely round. But also my point is, especially because it's one of the options. It's If it would be just the 400 millimeters and that's it, and you have not perfect stars, that's another thing. But having the option, having being so fast and just having this as a, add-on which doesn't cost much to the whole package, I think it's nice and then with a blur exterminator you have a very good result. The other thing was, <laughs> you, I think you called it user friendliness. And yeah, that's for me a little bit a different story. Because first of all, with the 0.8 reducer on the mount, I could simply screw the camera off, take the reducer out, put the reducer in, issue done. Here, I actually managed to do it on the mount, okay, going to the 0.6 reducer. But still, I mean, loosen it the up, then you put it back, then you get the whole thing out of balance. And then, <laughs> then the whole thing starts to turn around, so you have to stop it again. The, at the attention that nothing falls out. Then it's not so easy, the stuff is heavy to really screw it in. Obviously through the whole exercise, the whole telescope and everything is wide open for dust and pollen and whatever, insects, whatever can fly in there. So that's also not great. Then the scope has now a completely different size. You have to rebalance your whole rig. So there's just a lot of work involved. It's not like I just changed the reducer it's really, probably it will be the same effort to take the scope off and put my FRA 400 on the rig. Probably it would be even easier to change the telescope. So that actually upset me much more than the optical part. Then actually the reducer, the 0.6 reducer, got stuck. When I wanted to change it again, I couldn't anymore. It was completely stuck and because it's only so much who actually looks out on top, you cannot really nicely take it. So I had to use this here. I had to buy it actually. And with that, I could get it unstuck again. That's by the way, really a great tip I also got from YouTube from somewhere. Yeah, so there were for me a little bit too many things. So I would say if you're, if you're for galaxy season or whatever, you need a 700 millimeters and then you change it to 400 millimeters and leave it at this point through the nebula season, you know, I think it's worth it and it's fine. But my experience was it's definitely not something you want to change in the middle of the night or change 
one day this, one day that, and you, you juggle around because it's just too much effort to do the change. I don't know how you see that. Yeah, it, it kind of reminds me of the Ascar V series, uh, if you're familiar with that, with the 80 um, millimeter uh, aperture and 60 millimeter aperture objective lenses and the you know extender, reducer, and flattener. Um, you know, testing all those as you know, as someone who was testing them kind of like all in one night consecutively, you know, it's a, it's a lot of work for sure. And like you mentioned, you get kind of dust and, you know, insects might want to build a home in there, which is kind of cute, but also just, you know, an obstruction for, for, for our purposes. But yeah, I think your point of, you know, just knowing ahead of time, you know, for this season, I'm going to use this configuration. And then for this season, I'm going to kind of keep this configuration is probably the way to go. Um, obviously, there are going to keep people out there that are going to be more apt to wanting to change things out. But yeah, it's just, it's not uh, something you'd want to do on a, on a nightly basis, that's for sure. But, you know, then again, I've heard some folks that are just like, yeah, I will tra- you know change things out in the middle of the night with the Ascar V. And I'm like, yeah, more power to you. So um, to each their own, for sure. But it is a struggle trying to get, uh, just trying to take anything off or on is just not fun. <laughs> So yeah, that's actually nicely summed the whole thing up. So for me still, I would say I had a very positive experience with it because for me, the main thing is the flattener plus sometimes the 0.8 reducer. And I think these two elements together with the 103 APO, I can really to for 100% um, recommend to everybody, especially at this price point. The 0.6 reducer, I think if you do not have a scope in this area and you cannot afford another scope, then definitely um, go for it. But I think having also another scope in the lower focal length area definitely makes sense and having there then some flexibility again with a reducer um, instead of using uh, the 103 APO as jack of all trades. I would say this is, if, if it's affordable, I think that's the better way to go. So I will definitely not sell my FRA 400. You're going to keep it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I share very similar sentiments. Um, you know, if you have blur exterminator, go for it with the 0.6x reducer, especially just given that it's, you know, 200 and, or uh, the reducer 0.6x reducer being $299. You know, like you said, if it's not uh, an option for you cost-wise to have a smaller scope, yeah, maybe look into that. But as far as the 1x and the 0.x reducer uh, kind of configurations, awesome yeah especially at the price point i'm just i was floored by the price point for this telescope and the correctors it's just uh, pretty cool okay thanks a lot sarah for joining this call app it was very nice talking to you and much luck with your scope yeah thank you so much for having me and i love your channel and really appreciate you having me on best of luck for uh your imaging with the scope